energy forecast for Saturday, August 3rd. Okay, so we have the moon still in her rulership in Cancer energy. However, we'll be going void, of course, at 6.32 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into Leo energy at 7.10 a.m., so a very short window of opportunity that the moon is void. That's going to work in our favor because, of course, when the moon is void, things are shaky, things are uncertain, things are unstable, and I think we've all had enough of that especially with the last couple of days of the moon being in her rulership in cancer energy. It was basically a throwback, a flashback to cancer season. And I don't know about y'all, but not too many people had a good time in cancer season. It was very heavy, very weighted, very emotional. Of course, we had to do a lot of releasing, a lot of endings, a lot of purging that essentially speaking, we're still kind of cleaning up that debris, those loose ends. Now, the moon shifting from Cancer energy into Leo energy is always a welcome shift because, of course, that Leo energy is a fire sign, kind of dries us up, dries us off from all of those emotions that get triggered and activated while in Cancer energy. But this is also putting us in the new moon window. We will be having the new moon in Leo pop off at 12 degrees here on the 4th. And so it does kind of put us in a little bit of a situation where we're going to start feeling the dark phase of the moon. That new moon is the dark phase. We, there's no illumination in the sky. We have to sit with ourselves. We have to see the triggers, the activations that need to happen in order to create the breakdown so that we are prepared and kind of looking forward to the breakthrough. The Leo energy, of course, is the heart and soul of the Zodiac. So we still very much are in this heart space. We are heart aligned. We are going to have some triggers and activations to illuminate what we do have to kind of acknowledge and release off of that heart space to lighten the load before we're downloaded with all these good vibes with the new moon and Leo that puts us in a more bold, brave, courageous type of stance in order to be our real, true, raw, authentic selves. We are about to pivot in a big way. But first... We have a whole day of moon aspects. There are eight different aspects taking place here today. All eight are going to involve the moon. So again, another day, especially on a Saturday, Saturn ruled, where we have to get down in the nitty gritty. We have to figure out what we have to kind of release from our heart space, release from our emotional body and our mental plane in order for us to start pivoting and building towards something new. So we're going to get a little bit more in the, let's call it stronger emotional disposition as we move throughout the day. We are going to have some triggers and activations to highlight what needs to kind of stay what needs to go but those activations we're handling them with a much better attitude much better mood we are much stronger than we were than way back in cancer season let's be real okay so there's not as much whiningness not as much crying not as much victim mentality but we are going through again the dark phase of the moon so there is going to be a heaviness a weight that we have to acknowledge for release okay so the moon still in cancer energy going to sextile beautiful interaction with Uranus, the Great Awakener, in Taurus energy. So this is going to put us in a situation where we're starting to kind of let go of the attachments to the past, because again, Cancer energy, super, super, super focused on where we're coming from, what we wish would have happened, kind of crying over spilled milk, so to speak. However, this is the pivot point. We're at the end of Cancer energy, so we're starting to kind of see where it is that we have to break away from holding on too dearly to the past, to at least bring ourselves in the present moment to figure out what we have to do to nurture ourselves, nourish ourselves back to a place of emotional health and wellness. The Iranian energy brings clarity. It brings a shock to the system, so to speak. It opens us up to thinking about new ways, new methods, new paths, new directions. And in Taurus energy, this has everything to do with our physical realm. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in Leo energy. This is going to be a really good interaction for us to kind of get to the heart space, to get down to the nitty gritty of what it is that we want, what we need, what we desire, what we're craving, what we absolutely want to focus on as far as rearranging our physical realms, where routines are concerned, where relationships are concerned, where money matters are concerned, because of course we're tapping into these creator 
abilities. And part of being the creator of our own realm, our own reality means that we have to kind of reanalyze what is working, what isn't working. We have to let our heart space lead because we want to build a life that not only looks good, but that feels good. We're operating more from our authentic space. So this is definitely going to put us in touch with our emotional needs. And of course, that stems from taking a good look around at where it is that we're at, how it is that we've gotten here and where it is that we would like to go from here. The moon is then going to trine beautiful interaction with Neptune, who of course is retrograde in his place of power in this Pisces energy. This means that the moon is at the 29th degree of her rulership in Cancer energy. Why do we know that? Well, because Neptune is at the 29th critical crisis degree of his rulership. So any planet or luminary making their way through a sign that 29th degree, there's going to be some sort of interaction with Neptune. Now this is working in our favor. A trine is a good vibe. This is water on water action. Water on water means that first of all, it's cleansing us from a lot of the heaviness, a lot of the weight, especially where our emotions are concerned, especially where some confusion is concerned. It's cleansing us, it's purifying us. And then the water energy gets us in touch with our feels gets us in touch with our intuition, with our vision, with our higher self in order for us to figure out what needs to change, what needs to transform. Water energy is the only element that can take on all three states, a gas, a liquid, a solid, depending on the environment, depending on external pressures. So this is going to be a little bit of a refresher. Yes, it does have a tendency to make us a little bit more sensitive than we would like to kind of be, but it's a positive energy. This means that the sensitivity is our superpower. We're tapping into empathy. We're tapping into compassion. Yeah, for people, for the world around us, but mostly for ourselves. We've been going through it taking us all the way back to cancer season when, of course, we went through that solstice energy, which, of course, was a karmic reset, which, of course, put us in a totally different timeline, a totally different version of self. We've been anchoring this new version of self in and having to really examine the fragmented parts of the old version of self, the old realm, the old reality. That's why it's been so hard to disconnect and detach from the past. So we are kind of giving ourselves a little bit of a pat on the back, I would say, a little bit more credit than we have in the past. We've been going through it in major ways and we definitely have to acknowledge the amount of healing work that we have done. So this is definitely going to put us in the right mood and the right attitude to see ourselves from a totally different lens. This is also the point in time, 6.32 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, that the moon is going to go void, of course. We have one aspect taking place while the moon is void, and that is a semi-square, creating a little bit of tension and conflict with Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings, basically the wisdom that we've accumulated through the tough love life lessons. Jupiter is in Gemini energy. So we're definitely pushing the boundaries, the comfort zone of our mental plane. We're trying to see both sides of the coin. We're trying to adopt different perspectives, if you will. We're really starting to try and pressurize ourselves to choose, to decide what path, what goal, what direction we want to go in from here. Now, most of the time when being aspected in a positive light, Jupiter is bringing confidence. He's bringing optimism. He's like the hype girl. However, this is a semi-square. This is going to highlight for us where it is now that we're getting cold feet, where it is that we're on the precipice of deciding, of choosing, of making a major change. We're st starting to kind of get clammed up a little bit. And so this could definitely create some anxiety, create some confusion along with that. That's what happened when the moon is void. We're starting to tap into fears and doubts and insecurities because that's the shadow part of cancer energy. And of course, we're not standing in our power at this particular juncture. The fears, the doubts, the insecurities of what it means to move on, what it means to grow up and grow through, evolve what it is that we're currently going through. None of that feels good. It is 100% not supposed to, but we do shift into the Leo energy at 7:10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and this is where we kind of buck up a little bit, where we kind of get a little bit more strength. We kind of are operating from that heart space. We're willing to rise up to a challenge. We're just in a different mood and a different attitude. However, 
8.18 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon in Leo will be in a direct opposition sitting across the table from Pluto. Pluto is the great transformer. He is retrograde in this Aquarius energy trying to highlight for us the inner power struggle. Could be the power struggle out in the physical realm as well, but of course all of that stems from our perception. The Aquarius energy needs us to think about the future, needs us to put into perspective what we have to do, what we have to build, what we have to create, what we have to improve upon, what we have to change in order to get from where it is that we're at to where it is that we desire to be. This is a huge trigger, huge activation deep in our psyche, deep in our conditioning, deep in our programming. We are definitely going to feel the tension. It feels like we are on edge. It feels like we are being challenged. It feels like we're trying to, I'm going to say, avoid confrontation because we almost see that a shit show could definitely pop off. This is the edginess. This is the darkness. This is intensity that needs to trigger and activate the not so nice thoughts the not so nice feelings in this dark phase of the moon to initiate the breakdown so that we are prepared for the breakthrough. 1.44 p.m., so quite a chunk of time that we sit in that confrontational, challenging type of energy. It is going to provide us an opportunity to kind of see where it is that our needs aren't being met, where it is that we're not happy, where it is that we do need to kind of, you know, stabilize in our current situation before making a major change. But then, you know, the moon is going to go ahead and make an awkward interaction with Saturn. So Saturn is the Lord of Karma. He rules over roles and responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, discipline. And he is retrograde in this Pisces energy, helping us to deconstruct and collapse the old reality. The way that things used to be, the way that we used to feel, the way that we used to operate, the way that we used to trust, the way that we used to believe in ourselves or the lack of. Now, Saturn's going to bring a reality check. That's what he does. He kind of, you know, brings on a negative narrative. We need this. We're in the dark phase of the moon. Does it feel fun? Nope, not supposed to. However, going to put into perspective the debris that we have to clear out of the way before we have a clean slate to start building towards something new. The moon then goes ahead, makes a positive interaction with Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, ruler of communication, and how it is that we express ourselves. Mercury is in his rulership in Virgo energy. So we are just analyzing the F out of our headspace, out of our feelings, out of our environment. We're picking things apart. We're dissecting things. We're starting to focus on the problems because we have to identify the problems in order to actually fix, heal, or repair them. Is it supposed to be a good feeling? Well, I would say that when our heart and our head are not on the same page and we're attempting to get on the same page, it can feel a little bit abrasive. It can feel a little bit uncomfortable, but this actually is a good interaction. So we're making some headway, if nothing else, to get that heart and head on the same page. The moon being in Leo energy now has us heart aligned. Mercury in his rulership has us focused on the smaller details that we have power and control over as of right now in order to remove the aspects, the elements that we no longer want to pour into, and we can focus on what we need to build and create to fill that void, to fill that space. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon trining the north node in Aries energy. So this gives us some fire on fire action. We love fire energy. It helps to burn away those heavier thoughts, those heavier emotions, helps us to burn through the attachments, the cords that we currently have to the past. It helps regenerate a spice and energy, a passion, a desire within us. And it puts us in a better mood and a better attitude to now focus on the future and see what we want to grow, what we want to build, what we want to bring to life, what we want to accomplish. It is going to require us to, again, rise to the challenge of adjustment to get from where it is that we're at to where it is that we want to be. But we're building in the courage that the Leo energy lends us in order to do just that.